Well, we're back at Red Brook Honey. September 9th, which is a few days after the final fall harvest. And we've had a little stretch of 89 and 90 degree weather here. And it's been very warm. And I wanted to show this picture of um, one of our hives. And you see the front door, it's late afternoon. It's almost six o'clock probably at 43rd latitude here in Scarborough, Maine. And what we try to do is let the forage grow right up next to the hive. And as you can see, um, we've let the goldenrod move in right here in front of the hive. These girls actually don't have to go very far at all. All they do is, uh, there's a few of them in there and I'll show it to you in a second. But I've let the goldenrod, the Queen Anne's lace, they don't work the red clover. Um, the nectuaries are too far down in and their tongues aren't long enough. The bumblebees work the red clover, but there's some white clover in there, Queen Anne's lace. But right now what they're working, and it smells like they're working the goldenrod here. And so when you look at the front entrance of the hive, you see the girls starting to come back into the hive. And there's a few bees fanning. They've got their, their fanning to cool off the hive. It's been a very, you know, it's a 90 degree day today. It's been very warm. We're about done with this warm stretch. And they're fanning, they're getting some air coming out. Now they try to circulate the air. They were yeah, air conditioning where some bees fan the air in and some bees fan the air out. And you see their abdomens, you see their wings, they're sitting there and the wings are flapping as fast as they can, but the legs are holding on to the, the entrance board there. And pretty soon they'll start to gather more here as the bees come back. It's about another hour of forage. But uh, you look at the goldenrod, the goldenrod plant right here in front of the hive, and you can see how yellow that goldenrod is. And goldenrod is a major source of fall honey, major source of fall pollen. And uh, hopefully your bee yard has it. There is a, a milkweed which bloomed here around here in uh, late June. And you can see this milkweed in front of this hive. I've let it stay. This milkweed, you can see the big pods of milkweed on the front, on the, on the plant. And uh, those are going to bust open. And then the seeds will be cast into the fields here. And we get a very nice, that uh, contributes to our early fall hunt, uh, early uh, spring pull. Uh, the, we pull on July 4th-ish and we pull on Labor Day-ish. We pull honey and the milkweed goes in, but the, what you're looking at, those pods, they're going to bust open, fly around the field, and then um, they'll be part of the um, sp spring honey pull next year. I don't see any girls right now on this golden rub. You see how tiny that flower is? Very tiny. And uh, just a moment ago, there was five or six of them, um, the, the foraging honeybees on this uh, goldenrod. They're working goldenrod. Right now we're just a little past bloom on the um, Japanese knotweed. The aster that you see, the white in the tall field here, the, the aster that you see, I'll lighten it up a little bit. But you can see the, ad, the the white flowers that you're looking at, the small, small white flowers, are aster. And those aster um, are just starting to come in now. The uh, Japanese knotweed is just starting to go away. The goldenrod, I'd say, is two-thirds of the way through the bloom of goldenrod. And we're very fortunate here in the temperate climate to have a good fall flow, which really helps us uh, set up the colonies for overwintering. Uh, you can see right here this patch of goldenrod. See those two colonies right there? And the patch of goldenrod right behind it has gone. It's turned dark brown and it's gone away. Um, let me show you some of the aster that we have here. An aster is a uh, very um, prolific here in the field. And uh, this aster will bloom until Columbus Day. Uh, and what you'll find is that the bees, they aren't in it very strong right now because they're working the goldenrod and the Japanese knotweed. This is another day or so, uh, they really start to get into the aster. And if you look across the field, you can see just a little yellow. 
and the little yellow you see across the field there is the goldenrod and it's all over. Goldenrod and aster in this field and then the Japanese knotweed is um, across the top of the hives down here. Uh, I don't know if you can quite make it out, but all the way across the top of the hives is the, is the uh, Japanese knotweed. What we do here at Redbrook Honey is we make sure that, you see how this field is overgrown, it's a wildflower field, and it's perfect. The field across the way, there's a 50 acre field across the way, and they cut that two or three times in the summer, and so you get a lot of clover and a lot of gold and a lot of dandelion. Here we get the late, later flow because we don't cut the field. And so the aster and the buckwheat and the, and the uh, goldenrod have a chance to grow up. And when they grow up, um, they then give you the fall flow. We will cut this field after the aster finally blooms. When the frost kills the aster around Columbus Day, will cut the field and then the field will let, be let grown all the way through next um, uh, a year from now. So we only cut it once after the killing frost later in the summer. So there's a little primer on the late summer forage here. Um, it is still late summer believe it or not. It's not fall until when? When is fall? Uh, September 20, September 21. And this colony here um, these bees are a little lighter than the bees we were looking at before. These are Italian bees. And this was started from a nucleus colony in early, in, early Jan in early June of this year. And you can see it's doing very well. There's a lot of bees fanning. See how light, see how yellowish, the uh, orangish yellowish the bees look? These are Italian bees and they're fanning and they're guarding the front entrance and they're just making sure that everything is going fine. So, late afternoon here at Red Brook Honey in Scarborough, Maine.